squeaky chair. <laughs> Hello, this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and this is another click look click. <laughs> Hello, this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and this is another click look video where I clickly look at various art books and today we have an Imagine FX art book called Fantasy Creatures. The ultimate guide to mastering digital painting techniques. And the first thing I love about this is that that text is like shiny. Because if it was just blue and not shiny, I don't think it would work. But the shininess makes it from that angle it looks that blue with the the gold looks really nice. And that's what the back says. A step-by-step -step approach to mastering digital painting tech creatures, <laughs> creatures and stuff. And that's it. Lovely. Collins and Brown. Never heard of these before. But before we get into this one, it is day 11. It's December the 11th. So it's time to see what is behind today's little advent calendar. And I am going to say, I think it is... A piece of holly. Ooh, he's cool. It's a little polar bear with a milky bar thing. And we like, we like white chocolate. What is this like? It's like a monkey or something. <laughs> a little monster. Hey, it's a snowflake. I like that. I like chocolate. Milky bar is the best chocolate, I think. And also, I'm working through my, what's it called, drapery course at SVS Learn and I thought I'd show some of the little bits of fabric I've been doing. But I'm really enjoying this course, I'm still right near the beginning, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a video sometime next year looking at that course and pretty soon it's going to be looking at creating fabrics on creatures and characters. So that's going to be exciting. But let's get into this little book. So I haven't looked, haven't even opened this yet. But I love square books. For some reason I find square books to be a lot nicer. I don't know why. Has it got a sleeve on it? Nope. This one hasn't got a sleeve. It's just got a very thick cover. And it's really shiny. Most covers aren't shiny like that. It almost looks like you got a piece of glass. I like that. Look at the colours of that. Looks really nice. I'm I'm excited for this one because I like little creatures, especially dragons and stuff. So I, he's cool. Look, <laughs> he's quite funny. He looks scary, but he looks cute. Cute, scary. When was this book made, I wonder? 2011. So it's quite, uh, it's nearly 10 years old. It's getting on a bit. Fantasy creatures. Uh, we've got little humans as well. Ooh, look. We've got creature gallery. So we're going to have a little bit of text at the beginning, I suppose. Then you've got creature gallery. I'm going to like that. So just be art. Then we've got fairies. Fables and Friendly Giants Beasts in 3D Vampires, that'd be cool Vampires and Demons Myths and Monsters This sounds really cool Alien Races Creature Features <laughs> That sounds fun, Creature Features I think that's called Rhyming Couplets or something When I studied English They said about that That's cool Little doggy look. <laughs> Little doggy's scared of him. I love cre I love characters. So we've got a little lady called Claire. I like faces as well, people's faces. Creature gallery. To be fun. Oh, I like the way they've set that out. So you get the name of it, you get the artist. And you get the little website, and then you get, it says here, 
Hair strands group together to form the sundew like tentacles with sticky fluid drops at the tip. This, Emily explains, attracts various insects. These are caught by throwing a few sticky st strings of hair and drops of sundry fluid. That's cool. You're getting like a little backstory about the character. Little person, but how cool is that for creativity? Little fairy on the back of a like a bee or something. That's amazing. That looks nice as well. If you want to know the names of the artists and stuff. Oh, they must be both by the same artist, Emily. That's cool. Big monster. Bit, a bit upset that they put that like that. They put it on the gutter so you can't really... Oh, that looks cool. Pretty impressive. Looks like a something out of a video game. I like that hand. Looks cool. David Raposa. David Raposa. Torin. Yeah, I bet that's from World of Warcraft. Yes. This image is inspired by a World of Warcraft character. I did think it was like World of Warcraft. Minotaur. Very sketchy. I like that. Orca. By Bradley White. That's cool. That one's really sketchy, look. It's almost sort of sh shell shaded. <laughs> shell shaded. Nice shapes. That's the one from the start. Old Knight. Bradley White again. Bradley Wright. Little teddy bear. Yeah. Pretty epic. Background's blurry. Makes it pop. Red, red dragon. My favourite one so far is... is... where is it? I love that. I can't stop thinking about that. <laughs> Scary. Oh, it's a bit of a shame that they put the art on the gutter. I don't like it when they do that. The cooling. That's cool. I like that one as well. Yeah, I like that. Sabre tooth. That one's called patience. I like that. Jason Garriver. Fairies, fables, and friendly giants. This book set out very nice. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. That's amazing. Nice little butterfly as well. My sister would like that one. That's beautiful. Who's that by? Benty... Benty Shulik. Benty Shulik. This is cool. It's gonna... A journey through the painting process of fairies from sketch. Hope we've got sketches. Yay! Look how different it looks. Oh, this is cool. Oh, this is cool. The sketch. Choosing the colour scheme. Colouring. Little... You get little art tips as well, look. Little shortcut tips and stuff. I 
I like that they've got the sketches in here. Doesn't look as good in the sketch. That's quite weird. Normally the sketch is a lot better than the finished piece. I think this one's the other way around. It's because she added the butterflies and stuff. And the colours. Nice colours. Defining the background, the lighting. Pro secrets. Take the tube. It can be helpful to create some tubes for your backgrounds. In this case, a simple one implying leaves. I don't understand that. Tubes are straightforward dots painted in high resolution. But if you put them in your painting, I don't understand. Character, layer effects, skin textures. That's cool, it's going to tell you how to create textures and stuff. Mixing butterfly and dragon wings. That's what I, I learned that in one of these articles. She said in the article about mixing different animals together to create unique animals. She's mixing butterfly and dragon wings to create unique wings. Cool. Yeah, look. Two little reference images. That's pretty... Two little reference images creates a new unique thing. Goes into what um, Austin Cleon said in that book, Steal Like an Artist. He said about stealing, just steal lots of things and stick them together and make them your own. Choose tools wisely. Dressing her up. Yeah, because I really... Oh, she's got a little tattoo. No, she doesn't. Ah, that's the... Um... Oh, that's cool. Showing you how to do the fabrics. This is going to be really fun to read, I think. Don't like him too much as a character, but he's got beautiful shapes. Big fat shapes. Paint a placid titan. <laughs> yeah. He looks a bit silly. Actually, I really like him now. <laughs> when I first saw him, I thought I'm not really... Yeah, he's got quite a lot of character. He's like a lovable giant. Gi gi Finnard Rams. Concept artist Finnard Rams shows you how to create a character who's large and in charge. Large in charge. They've done it again. Beautiful writing in here. Huh. Sketches. We love sketches, look. These are better sketches. These are more exciting. That sketch there was a bit stiff. Big shapes. Yeah, he's almost doing that silhouettes thing. This is really cool, it's going right through the entire process. Yeah. Underpainting. Again, got lots of little reference images. Don't get ahead of yourself. I spend a lot of time rendering underneath the lines. I think these articles here might be really good for future podcast episodes. It's got lots of, I can tell it's going to have lots of tips, textures, little tips. Oh, cool. Hey, that's quite funny. At first you see the rabbit and then you see the monster. They look cute. Fluffy. Big Bad Bunny Eater by Bobby Chi. Discover how Bobby Chi can turn a simple 15 second sketch into the biggest threat the bunny world has ever known and then try out the same techniques for yourself. Nice. 
Yeah, that's a brilliant sketch. That's such a basic sh like sketch, but it's got all the information in it. I love this one. That got a texture on the rabbits. Little bunnies. That's quite funny. Nice textures. Be interested to see how they did the textures zoom in and out. Textured layer. I take images of scanned leaves and mesh them together to create a textured layer. Hmm. Yeah, cool. beautiful shapes. Do you know what I love about this book? They're all so very different. I don't think any image is going to beat that one in this book. Sexy siren. Sexy shapes. Yeah, straight and curvy. Johnny, Johnny Duddle. Johnny Duddle combines humour with the faintly erotic and a group of paintly pirates. <laughs> hey look, she's got an axe in her hand. She's going to slice him up. Love the shape of that little tail. You can almost feel that slapping about. Mm, nice shapes. Like that. Oh, I love that look. This is brilliant. You got sketches. I love this one here. I almost feel like that's better than the finished one. It's got more aliveness to it. Yeah, I quite like this bit. Oh, that is. Really liking this book. It's completely different to the other books I've ever looked at. Naughty. Naughty nipples. Fish tails. Yeah, that's the best shape. Yeah. The Nature of Fairy Art Folklorist and fairy artist Mark Potter reveals his top 20 tips to get inspired. This is cool! This is really cool. Mark Potts. Do fairies wear stripy tights? <laughs> Not all fairies are girls. Seen it. Folklore. This is... I like this. She's nice. She's got little tips and everything. That's cool. Naughty nipples again. Look, get them to pose. Try meditating or path working to see them in your mind's eye. Visit a wild beautiful place, somewhere that fairies might lurk to spark the imagination. I like this. Sketching and doodling. There are no rules. Beasts. Is that 30 or 3D? Beasts in... Fishy! <laughs> Not evil fishy. Creating a beast one. I think I've seen that before. Scott Spencer. <laughs> Breathes life into a creature using Z brush, a handful of brushes and a simple sphere. Scott Spencer. Z brush. Don't know what that is. That's a 3D thing, isn't it? <laughs> it's getting quite 
that's a bit too advanced for me, I think. Look at this, look. 3D sculpting. That's cool. Creating a Beast 2. ZBrush and Photoshop. In part 2 of his ZBrush workshop, Scott Spencer designs a colour scheme and creates a Photoshop painting of his creature. <laughs> of his creature. Of his creature. Not too keen on these. I prefer... I think I prefer 2D art. I'll still read it though. It's artist Q&A. This is cool as well. Yay, I like that. Hmm. 3D skills. Hunter of the Deep. Create detailed sculpts in Zebra Rush that can be used to in other 3D applications with expert Khalid Al Mahriaki. Love that. Hmm. Very aggressive. That's cool. Yeah, you got a sketch as well. Again, I think that sketch better than the love that sketch. That's I'd copy that. And look, it goes all through it. This is cool. That doesn't look like a three D thing. That looks like a the image. It's quite scary down there. Oh bloody hell. Zbrush on Photoshop. Fito lives. Fito. Create a creepy looking 3D alien fetus in Zbrush. The Valvero B. Burindia. That's pretty scary. I like it though. Mental. Look at those eyes there. Imagine that coming down the street. I wonder what that's going to grow up and look like when it's bigger. No, no sketches on this one. I'd like to have seen that as a sketch. Ways to be a better artist. He's pretty. I like this one as well, look. This is really good how they've done this book. Being a great artist has as much to do with your state of mind as it does with your skill. So agree with that. That's why I focus on meditations and stuff. If you get your mind in the right place, I think you can do anything. Learn the foundations. Break out of tunnel vision. Don't be a mindless artist. Don't just copy reality. Forget surface polish. Practice smart. Realistic expectations. Learn to take criticism. Be well-rounded. Only do it if you love it. I love that. I always say that, if you're not having fun, stop doing it. <laughs> Vampires and demons. That's good. Painter and Photoshop. 21st century vampire. Watch as Melanie Dellen recasts the Prince of Darkness as an angelus, ageless Lothario who's seen and done it all and still wants more. I like that. It's got a nice... 
nice textures and stuff. That's pretty cool. I love the effects of it. That's cool. Please be a sketch of it. Oh. Off, look. That looks a bit like Carney Reeves. <laughs> Keanu Reeves with fangs. It's amazing it goes from that to that. So, this is going to be really good to read. A boy and his carburous. Creative creation can be a tricky discipline to master. Swedish artist Jonathan Iverson Ujui <laughs> shares how he imbues his with personality. That dog's the best one now, I think. The dog's, little dog steals the show. Don't like that little boy. They're cool, but that little dog is amazing. He's got a mask on. Looks like he's got a Jason mask on. Hmm, little dog was like that at the start. Oh, that's cool, look. I didn't see that. That one there, its tail is like a snake thing. That's cool. Oh, but yeah, they're all combined together. I thought it was free. That's cool. Hmm. I love that. I wonder why he moved the dog's position. Another scary one, look. How do you paint dead, rotten flesh? That's be interesting. Dave Kendall. Demonic creature concepts. That's quite cool. How to create, design and illustrate an original demonic concept creature for the video games and film market with Davey Blight. I like the proportions on that one because the proportions are a bit weird makes it feel nice though from nailing it's, you're going to learn so much from this book not just how to use the photoshop and stuff but designing your characters She looks nice as well. Almost looks like the same person. Annie Strokes from the UK. Nice. I like the white edges. Makes a pop. Vampire tips. Annie Strokes reveals how to portray these moody menacing creatures of the night in a believable way. <laughs> this book is just full of... Oh, sexy. That might be my new favourite. Oh, look at the shape of that bat. I love this one. She's got hair like that. There's a lady called Starfucked. <laughs> Starfucked. And she, she's she got hair just like that. I think she dyed her hair recently, but... Beautiful image. I love the colours. I love that, those bats. Wow. 
What have we got? There's that one. Must be over here. Uh -huh. Yay, fairies. Hmm, look how different these two. One is just peaceful and beautiful, one is sexy and dangerous, but both beautiful. This is why I love art. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> Myths and monsters. Yeah. I, I do like that one. Creature design. Designing an imaginary creature in a fully formed illustration. Raymond Swanland shows you how. What I love about that is the shapes of it all. Yeah. Cool. Oh, I love it. Look at the look. Hmm. Something really nice about these shapes. To reinforce the sacred nature of this photo dragon, I paint a luminescent halo. Reinforcing graphic elements, little tips. Release the Kraken. Bart Tyson gives the iconic sea creature a contemporary look while creating a painting that has plenty of action and movement. Little people there, look. I like that when you get little people there, look. I love it when they put little tiny people in with a big monster. Hmm. That's cool. It's a bit like God of War. Just a thumbnails. Oh. Little man falling off the cliff there. Artist q and I've designed a serpent creature. Do you have any tips for painting it up? Rachel Humpt replies. So she's going to talk about colours. That'd be cool. I love that one. Monster Creations. Creation of the male squisk, an insight into the evolution of a beast, by John Kiani. Kiani, John Kiani Reeves. Kiani. I think it's quite like hideous, in a good way. Little sketches. Hmm. This book will definitely be getting covered in a future podcast. Because these articles are... Really good. Art Sins. Francis Tizia reveals 10 common pitfalls of digital art and how best to avoid them. This will be good as well. Jaggies. Monster mythologies. mythologies. <laughs> Learn how to create your very own mythologies through concept and design with a little help from John Pavilek. That's a weird creature. That's a really weird one. That's just weird. It's got no legs or something.
weird creatures. Very weird. My dinosaur looks puny. How do I make it look more aggressive and muscular? Muscular. <laughs> That'd be cool. Again, little tips. Alien waces. Oh, how cool is that? Very two realistic sci-fi portraits. This is an artist I will have to look into. If he's done more of these, that would be amazing. Michael Kunchi from Germany. Looks a little bit like Barack Obama. <laughs> That's cool, that is. I love that. Michael Kutze shows you how he created a human chimp hybrid to illustrate his technique for painting lifelike characters. Oh bloody hell look. Starts out like that. This is crazy. Slowly adding details. Crazy. I love this. <laughs> Are there any tips you can provide for making a monster or alien creature feel like it has intelligence? Looks a little bit like, what's his face, from He-Man. What was he called? What was he called, Dennis? I can't remember his name. What's that bloke from He-Man called? He-Man. It is called... Ah, uh, I can't remember his name. He-Man's nemesis. Quick Martian concepts. Sony concept artist Andy Park explains his way to develop a character in Photoshop. Photoshop. Blurry. Detail. Focus. It's <laughs> got multiple hands. Bit too dark. I, I like. Yeah, I'm not not keen on the colours. Cool, cool character design there. Twenty-five ways to design an alien. I like this. The truth is out there. <laughs> Kev Crossley has searched the galaxies and discovered twenty-five probing tips on alien creation. Look how good they are with their language. Probing tips. Using emotive language. <laughs> we like that. Sketches. Finding inspiration. Researching. Sketching. Draw from the shoulder. Make little models. They said that in SVS Learn. They said about creating little models of your characters. I created a little safety look. <laughs> it's not very good. It's, it's a bit... It's my first time ever sculpting. But it is good when you... Because when you design a character in 3D, you start to sort of understand it a bit more. Understand the shapes. My little Sophie. We like little Sophie. Little Sophie. I should design a I'm gonna I wanna I should draw a little Dennis. <laughs> like he wants me to draw him. De -de 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 -de. I'm gonna draw a little Dennis. Turn little Dennis into a little character. Quite fun. Look at all these tips look. Cool for cool sake. But yeah, this is cool. Creature features. Creature features. Is he friendly or evil? I think he is friendly. I like that. I 
I like that. Create a one hour monster. John Beerns reveals how to create a monster from blank page to illustration in just one measly hour. That's impressive. It's amazing. Oh cool look. Little designs. Yeah. I like that character. Can't believe you've done that in an hour. Could you offer any good methods for merging several animal references for when sketching a creature concept? Look at that look. That's like a chicken... some sort of chicken thing. Look at this look. You make the rules. This is your creature, you make the rules. Don't feel obliged to maintain the proportions. This is cool. Tips galore in here. <laughs> I can imagine that in a, in a video game. Watercolour to digital. A watercolour and digital approach to painting a fine art portrait of a monster by Justin Gerard. He looks friendly to me. Friendly. We like friendly monsters. Just plug this phone in, this camera. Friendly monsters. Oh look, I knew he was friendly. Started out with little friendly monsters. Monkeys. I like those. It's really cool seeing how things come together. I feel a bit like he has lived a life not being true to himself. So he's he spent a life being quite sad. He's got all the riches in the world, but he's not happy. That's what I think. Yeah, look, there is his watercolour. i tell you what, this book is really cool. Tom Garden. Tom Garden takes you through the most useful features of the pen tool and its many applications. Got all the tips everywhere in this book. Creature Anatomy Workshop. Joel Carlo explores the different anatomies of some of the most popular beasts of myth and folklore. Snakes. Mm. Oh, this is going to be interesting to read. Mammals, reptiles, amphibians, insects, birds, fish, <laughs> fishies. My favourite fishy on this one. Ah, oh, I'd like to eat that one. That's a nice little fishy, that. He's cool as well. Symmet symmetrical designing. Through the, through the process of abstract asymmetry, <laughs> duplication, Mike Corelio explains how to produce dozens of unique symmetrical thumbnail designs. To be... yes. Hmm. It'd be good if you're designing a logo or something. That's great. Essential art skills. Bobby Chi explains his top 10 fundamentals that every digital artist should bear in mind. Forget these at your peril. 
10. Thinking Ahead. 9. Composition. 8. Light and Shadow. 7. Selective Drawing. When drawing, it's important to spread your focus across the whole image rather than a few certain spots. Line quality, silhouettes, keep saying silhouettes, tonality, linear structure, tension and relaxation, contrast, blind contours, tippy tips. That's amazing. That is amazing. Amazing. Oh, hey. He's funny. All right, do you know, I'm going I'm to have to get these other ones now. Fantasy Workshop. Manga. That'd be good. What's this one here? Sci-fi. It's another one, but like sci-fi. These would be good. You can see my face, look. Hello. <laughs> That's quite funny. I love this. I think my favourite, my favourite ones, <laughs> no, actually I think that's my favourite little sketch, my favourite one has got to be, yeah it's still going to be that one I think, that one's special, that one's sexy but this one's special, and the artist is Benty Schulich. Well, that was bloody beautiful, wasn't it, Dennis? Yes, it was. <laughs> Dennis wants a drink. Hope you enjoyed that, though. And I'm going to, because this book was only about a fiver. I think it was six quid. And those other ones, I've seen those on e eBay for about five quid. So if they are as good as this one, because this one, I feel like there's a thousand tips in here. And they're little tips as well, so you could just open it. Let's try an experiment. I'm going to open it to a page with a tip. And let's see if, let's see if it's a really good tip. So, colour separation. I now begin to define the colours of the materials on the creature's body and to separate the creature from the background. I do this by adjusting the colours of the basic layers. In this case, the creature shifts towards golds and coppers, while the background fades towards cooler tones. This is more accurate to the final materials and enables the warm foreground to naturally come forward in a spatially simple way because of the interplay between warm and cool colours. Nice. <laughs> warm and cool colours. So what I've learnt from that is warm, cool goes backwards, warm comes forward. Is that right? Or the background, in this case, the creature shift towards gold and coppers. Fire and here. Yeah, the warm, the warm comes forward, the cool goes backwards. Tips. Tips. Look at the beautiful colours of that. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and see you later for another one. <laughs> Bye. That was fun, right? I enjoyed that, Dennis.